question. Treating yes. brain like a head injury. I know the ihikon points for head injury, mm -hmm. but what else? What else would you recommend, particularly for like headaches due to head injury? Um, any anything that you can tell me about that? Okay, so when when you're saying head injury, you mean like external? Um, you know, they banged the head to like car accident. Bang, yeah, bang their head, and it was severe enough to have long term ramifications. Okay, fair enough. All right. So, so yeah, the Ihikon thing is at the end. And by the way, I, I have a number of variations on Ihikon. Um, uh, so, yeah, I mean, so officially Ihikon is bladder 60, bladder 57, and bladder 40, but it's really more like bladder 39. Of even, I actually take it more like bladder 38, meaning above the crease on the lateral oh. side. A needle towards, so you know, the you have the popliteal fossa, you have like a little triangle above it. Okay. So I'm taking it basically like almost it's sewn above bladder 39 on the lateral side, and I needle it inwards rather than straight in or upwards against the channel. I actually needle it towards the medial, um, the middle of the thigh. One sewn above 39? About, about one sewn. Okay. Soon. Okay, and, we and, have a, and that's instead of 40. That's, well, that is the, okay, so the official 40 here is never in the center. The official 40 is always lateral, but it used to also be above, okay? When I first okay. learned it, the way I learned it was above. Um, okay. So, and I learned it in that needling style of needling um, inwards. So that's- Now, the, is that- I, yeah, Can I ahead. just ask, is that the same as what she calls knee apex? I have no idea what knee apex is. Oh, you, you, it, it's, it's sort of the top of, the top of where the quadriceps meet. And it's sort of like a triangle above, above, it's like the apex of a triangle above. Um, ah, okay. Um, the muscle, but it's more in the no, center. No, it wouldn't because so. the apex would be in the center and this is on the side. Yeah. So okay. this is the, okay. so the same triangle. Either. Okay. Yeah, but it will be on the lateral side, needle towards that triangle. Okay. Um, because that triangle, there's something mushy there and there's something that uh, dictates how the hamstrings um, W will relate that so you really do want that you know the attachment of the hamstring as opposed to you could go for the belly um but so here are some of some of my variations um number one is so the main one which never changes is bladder uh 58 never changes okay and i might have said 57 before but it's supposed to be 58 um, so bladder 58 never changes. That's the main one. And if I'm going to use any reflexes for it, I'll use 58, you know, to check. Bladder 60, um, you know, which is supposed to be needled upwards, fine, you know, might work great, but I often will use uh, gold bladder 39, also needled upwards. And the other substitute that I do uh, a fair amount is instead of bladder 40, I would use bladder 36. Okay. So uh, those are those are the kind of uh, options that I have. So that's econ, but that's at the end. So that's after they've been turned over. And just one second, because we have someone, Michelle, yes, welcome. here. Um, so I just wanted to make to welcome you, Michelle. If you want to un oh, she disappeared. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, sometimes people. <laughs> All right, so back to uh, head injuries. Um, so on the front, uh, a number of things that are important. Uh, first of all, release the, in the, both the neck and the SCM. So your Sanjo 8 becomes extremely important. Okay. And then um, because in a head injury, so a, a number of things to look at. First of all, what, if you want to check, sometimes say they got hit here, it will actually show like um, a cross or diagonally across because the injury, the, if the skull was hit, but the brain went, you know, from side to side. 
The contra coup if, concussion? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So sometimes you may need to check, actually, you know, sort of imagine that the, the vector of the injury, which they often don't know, especially in a car accident. Um, and, and just try and, you know, you may find something on the other side. So that's one. Uh, in terms of checking, but in terms of treatment, so Sanjoy, but also because in a head injury, if your head went, you could also get um, um, stomach 11, 12 area can also get very congested, which means that it, it, it congests the blood supply to the brain. Okay, so uh, spleen three may actually be quite useful. Okay, uh, as well as inner yin um, and or lung eight. So these are th things that open up the brachioradial uh, plexus. Um, then um, REN12 can be very important, as well as REN, um, REN12 is important because it's related to neurological and spine. REN4 um, and or REN3 is a possibility. So this is the quote unquote distinction. REN3 tends to do better for extremities in terms of fingers and toes. REN4 tends to do a better job for the head, but either one might do the job here, okay? Um, and so, and then on, uh, the other thing is I'm looking because you kind of want to, um, what can, so, okay, a few more things besides go by a third night. Uh, if it's long-term, okay, what they could have above kidney three, there may be like a little um, nodule above kidney three, and it can be up to its, you know, more even more than its own above kidney. Three. So if you find that I would needle, otherwise go for kidney seven. Okay. Um, I would still do inner yin and um, side gallbladder twenty seven mushu from the side of. Um, um, rent for to kind of like move things upwards to because what happens is yes you have a brain injury but if your neck and the upper thoracics are congested that's not going to help so you want to elongate the spine to get more movement of the spine towards the brain as much as possible then on the back i do do two do four watto and then really search around T7, T5, T4, whatever, you know, the upper thoracics are very important. I'm sorry, say again, T? Uh, T5, T7, which are the height of the curve. Okay. But then also above T5, you know, search really well the upper thoracics. Influence. And then at the end you can do, you know, and then you can, you can sort of do econ, I mean, it's prescribed, and then do 16 another point I would consider. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, and if the SCM is really tight, um, so but after you do what you can to release it, sometimes you just, you just can't. Um, so, and this is where, you know, like your alternative SCM um, releasers like uh, Stomach 41 may come in handy. You know, so, so, you know, normally Sanjo 8 should do it, but, you know, if it doesn't, I'll add, um, you know, kidney should do it, but uh, then I'll add stomach 41. And again, with the idea that if you, if you, if you get a better standing on the foot, then the head has a better vibration because there's better grounding. Um, and I started this by wanting to say something else, which escaped me, damn it. Oh, but yes, you can actually needle the SCM, especially the top. If the top is very tight, you can actually needle it from the back, upwards, towards kind of towards the nose. Because sometimes the SCM is super, super tight. And Abby, when you said rim three, there uh, for more for extremities. Yeah. What kind of things and extremities? Okay. Um, like um, pain or numbness or something when you want. Okay. So REN3 is called um, the central pole. Okay. Zhongji. And so 
if you have the central pole, the central pole, it's like you lasso everything around it. And what's around it, the thing that's at the end, are the, the fingers and the toes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like you have the central pole and then you have the, 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 um, the ropes that are dangling from the central pole, sort of thing. Um, so that's REN3, whereas REN4, the name is Guan Yuan, the gate to the primary, primary as in head. It, it literally shows two lines representing the head over, over the feet. Um, so it's, you know, it's another extremity in a way, and REN4 tends to do a better job for head. Oh, one more combination, sorry. Um, if they have specifically around do 20 uh, discomfort or, um, you know, it, it feels mushy or it, it's warm or something, then go with what, what's called blood, stagnant blood in the head, you know, that's related to rent 4, uh, which is spleen 6, spleen 9. Pericardium, according to pericardium 8, if pericardium 8 is painful, then do three and five. If pericardium eight is not painful, do pericardium four. And um, lung five. So it's it's very similar to the blood pressure treatment, except it's the adding of lung five here. And no under the third toe. <coughs> okay. Thank you. What and also okay, I do have questions. I guess what about low blood pressure? Low blood pressure is actually a lot more common than high blood pressure. Strangely enough, yes. <laughs> so and I treated and just it. no. I treated this is where the under third toes, spleen six, spleen nine, pericardium, and um, small intestine nine ten are extremely useful. People like that will come with all sorts of disorders, and especially if they come with digestive disorders, that combination seems to do real extremely well for them. It's a, this is one of the bread and butter protocols for me. This spleen six, spleen nine, pericardium, um, and under third toe. It's because tons of people have low blood pressure, and they'll come for gynecological problems, or they'll come for digestive issues, or pain issues, or whatever. And when you start addressing the blood pressure, they, they start getting better. It's an elementary component of the body. You know, just like say diabetes or thyroid or autoimmune, um, you can't, if somebody has low blood pressure, everything is, you know, kind of like, Bleh. you know, nothing is moving quite at the rate that it should be. So they're constantly under strain. So if you don't address that, there's a, you know, you, you're minimizing your chance of, of their recovery. Let's say you use the, your best point for shoulder and, you know, but their shoulder may, may get, get grabbed back by, by the low blood pressure. It may get com complicated by it. So it's always worth addressing low blood pressure, even though most patients will ignore it unless they're fainting, you know. But yeah, lots of people come and they say, oh, no, they tell me my blood pressure is great. Well, what is it? Oh, it's 100 over 60. Well, you know, it's sort of, it's not exactly low, it's borderline, but it's worth, at that point, it's worth considering combination. The other um, typical thing is that people have blood pressures that sound supposedly okay. They're not high, they're not low. It's not like they have 90 over 50, okay, which is definitely low. And there's quite a lot of those, by the way. Um, but, you know, so if somebody set, has 120 over 60, or 100 over 80, the gap is weird. The gap has to be at around 40. You know, it doesn't have to be exact, but you know, so when you have weird gaps, that's a clear problem. It's not a very nice point, the under third toe. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so here's the story. So when I started using and I, I started with Moxa because I was afraid to needle. And then um, as needles got thinner, or as my use of needles, I've discovered thinner and thinner needles. So I use, I, well, so I used to do it with a number one by 30. 
and it was like a real drag and you press the guide tube like hell and you know you do it as fast and as furiously as you possibly can and then i've since discovered the um the dark green or you they even have a blue dark blue so these are i believe they're, they're the zeros zero zero and zero 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 something by sarens and half a ton don't don't get the 30 millimeters for these get, get the 15 millimeters for these and get the i think it's 0.12 is the official gauge of it and rarely 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 do people complain at this point it's more it's there you can see that they're not happy with you approaching the area because anything under the foot scares people when i do joy points i do kidney one i do um heart of soul i do center of the heel i do under the third toe all in spleen three i also do this um all the feet points uh, or, or jing well points i do with that kind of needle and it's generally not a huge deal um when i use the number one which is very thin for chinese style um but you know it's kind of and now that's the needle that i use on the body that was problematic and especially with if with a 30 millimeter it's just hard <sighs> You know, a shorter needle for this is just works much better. You know, and you know, just press the guide tube in. It's once they get over the fact that you when you touch the area, they're already like a little bit like you are not going to put a needle there, are you? You know, they're they're not happy about the thought, but the actual needle they usually don't feel. And it's in my experience, if they felt one side, which mm -hmm. then scares them they are actually not going to feel the second side. I, it's extremely, extremely rare that somebody literally feels both sides, the needle on both sides. Yeah, that's what I found actually with that one, that it's usually one side, it seems to be the side I put in first. <laughs> 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 well, I can't say it's always the side I put it. Well, then maybe it's about you. Maybe you're like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get better at this, <laughs> so you're more motivated to press the guide tube in. I don't find that it's necessarily the first side, but I think it's something to do with the nervous system, because it is a nervous system point. So what happens is, if you observe pericardium eight. It is extremely rare for someone to have both pericardium aids painful, at least in my, my, my experience. It's normal for somebody to have one side pericardium aid painful, so I do pericardium three and five. The other side is normal, so I do pericardium four or six, whichever. It's very common for people to have no pressure pain on either pericardium aid. But for someone to have per pressure pain on pericardium aid on both sides, very, very unusual. So I think there's something about the nervous system that sort of distinguishes from side to side. And if one side is active, then the other side is. And I don't know what it is, why, but it seems like points that have to do with the nervous system seem to have something along those lines, you know, in terms of sensitivity. Did you ever think, Evie, that um, it just occurred to me sometimes, you know, when with needles in general and that, um, you know, if you're using the like 30s, you know, um, 16 by 30 uh -huh. or 18 by 30, um, I often thought, you, you know, did, you know, would it get away with a smaller, shorter needle, you know, the depth is so shallow really for most, isn't it? You know, that you might even get away with like the 15. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So, um, so yeah, you could do, you could conceivably, with this style, you could probably get away with just ordering 50 millimeters for everything because you're not inserting so much of the needle. But here's or, the problem. Or 25, kind of, you know, there's a 25 that's kind of a common one as well, isn't it? Oh, I've never seen 25 because, um, I, you know, they usually come as 15, 30 for, for the, you know, Chinese may have a different size, you know, because um, 25 may actually match one, um, a one son or whatever. Um, here is the, here is my opinion on that. And 
So, okay, so I, I will say that I actually violate what I'm about to say. Sometimes I have a needle left over, like a short needle left over. And I, I, I have one more point to do in the person. I don't feel like opening a whole pack. And I have a 15 millimeter one. And let's say I'm doing the immune point, I'll stick a 15 millimeter needle in there. So yes, it's totally possible to do. What I don't like about it is this. A needle for me should have a certain amount of, uh, it's like an antenna. So it should have a certain amount of, enough of it sticking out, because otherwise it's not an antenna. If it's supposed to conduct chi and be influenced by the heavenly chi and stuff, then I, I kind of, and of course then people say, well, plastic candles don't do that anyway, but whatever. <laughs> I feel that the needle itself needs to have a little bit of uh, looseness to it. And if, you, if the needle is too short, in fact, I used to, my, my favorite needles used to be number two, which is the 18 by 40. Um, and which is like, nobody seems to like that. I don't know what it is, but I really like that size. And they're gentle, and that's when I use serin. And then when I switched to Dongbang, I moved more to one by 30. And the one by 30 I use for more sensitive points, but for most of the points I use number two by 40. And certainly on the back, it's much nicer to have a thicker needle. It's easier. And then you get a lot more of the needle is like sticking out. Um, the thing with, because I've, I'm using dung banks for the most part now, um, the one by thirties are good, are much better needles than their two by forties. Uh, their point eighteens don't seem to have the same quality, uh, or at least when I last checked, which may be more than ten years ago by now. Um, but um, I didn't like their, you know, their equivalents of the two by. But I, I thought that the one by thirties were perfectly reasonable. Um, so that's why I, that's why I do that. Um, but I, I kind of feel like, yes, you could probably get away with a, with a 15 uh, millimeter needle almost anywhere in the body, except maybe like sacroiliac ligaments and, you know, gallbladder 26, REN4, you know, those areas, because you're not inserting much. But it's, it's aesthetically displeasing to me. <laughs> You know, like I, I, I just need more of the needle um, personally. Also, the other thing is, for me, a 15 millimeter needle is the kind of needle you tap and you don't do anything with. You know, it doesn't get any further in. Once, you, once you're using even four or five, six, seven mil, millimeters of it, and you're doing any sort of manipulation, um, because at that point, you're talking about like half the needle is in. And to me, it feels like, you know, you should, you should never have more than a third of the needle, the length of the needle in the body, and preferably less than a quarter. You know, quarter seems like a good, you know, 20 to 25%, but once it's more than 30%, it's kind of like it feels too stuck, too rigid. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, yeah. yeah we, now yeah. you said... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Mary Jo. I was just saying, um, I like, there's a Tewa, uh, T-E-W-A brand. I think it's probably more, um, you know, more um, used here than maybe in the States, but um, they have a really nice quality needle as well. I've yeah. seen them. I've never actually used them, so I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, whatever works for you. Here's the here's what I use to. I mean, besides the fact that I needle myself and and whatever it feels like, then I decide. But you know, because some needles can look good, but when you put them in, they, you know, they, it's sharp. It, it it has a sharp feel to it when it penetrates. But one of the things that I look at is I take the needle out, and you know, don't, don't get me wrong, I don't do this on a daily basis, so it's not like I'm a wine connoisseur of needles <laughs> you know let me teach you how to because <laughs> i really can't you know i just happen to like certain needles but what i have noticed is that people will because you know when, when in the old days when i used to teach in the different countries i would see different needles and people will say i don't understand why this needle hurts and your needles don't hurt 
you know, they say it, it, it's supposed to be the same gauge. It's the same thing. So there's a needle, in my opinion, should be flexible. Okay, the needle should be. So this is where you can see a serin sticks out very clearly, uh, and even compared to a dung bang, a dung bang is stiff in comparison to a serin. So you you just flip the needle across your hand, and if you feel like the resistance in the needle, like it's it's tight, it's not it's not a good needle for me. Now it's a great needle for Chinese style go out of thirty three inches and <laughs> and get the electricity going. Yeah, for that style you need a tight needle, a stiff needle, because you can't you can't do anything with with a soft needle. But for what I'm doing, which is breaking down connective tissue, a soft needle, a, a flexible needle is actually better. So what I find is that, and this has nothing to do with the silicon coating or smoothness of the metal and all that kind of stuff, which may may have influences also I, that I can't tell because I can't see these things. You know, it's a microscopic thing. But what I can tell is when a needle is stiff, it hurts. When a needle is uh, flexible and bends and moves, so so you just you can pass it on your cheek, for example. And if you do that with a serine and you do that with any other needle, you can tell the difference. Now, there are needles I don't know about, and there are certainly better needles than serine. There, there's way more fancy stuff than serine. Serine is like for the, for, for the people. <laughs> you know, then you have, no, because you have, you have gold and silver needles and, and way, way interesting needles in Japan, you know, for specialties. But um, so serine is like for the commoners. Um, I find that dung bang is acceptable. So well, the problem that I've had with other needles is that when I do this, and then I, I, I'm going, hmm, there's something that doesn't feel right. It's either too tight, or it may be loose, but it, it, it just isn't right. And then when I insert them into my, you know, I, I needle myself, I go, ouch. And that's when I go, okay, that was cute, but I'm not going to bother. So, for example, there's a German company that basically, well, this is a long time ago. Um, they were imitating serin. Um, same kind of plastic handle, same, um, you know, same coloring system, blah, 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 blah. But they were not, and they, they you know, it's, it was a German company, so good steel, or, or, it didn't have the same quality. And they were painful. The other thing is I really didn't like about them is that they had, they came each needle in the guide tube came with a little um, twisty, you know, the serines you just, you just turn around and, and you, there's no extra crap on them. Some needles, they put a little thing that stops the needle in the guide tube and you have yeah. to take it out. But the serine, I, I got 40 in the serine zero while back for 18 by 40, is it something like that? Yeah. And they have a really annoying little, you know, little plastic thing. Is that what you mean? That holds the, um, you know, just to, you have to twist. They're them. stuck. They're, they're glued. I think they're glued or something. They're soldered into the guide tube. So you have to twist it and then tap it in. But other needles, what they have when they come single needles, they have a little tab. Yeah, that's what Would I mean. Take out, I hate that. Oh, the Sarens had a tap? The last ones I got, yeah. Uh, oh, oh. oh, no. They're, um, and these are not, um, they're like within the last three months, four months maybe. Um, let's see the size. Um, yeah, they're number, uh, Sorry, they're twenty-five by forty. Oh, twenty-five. Oh, well, okay. Twenty-five by forty is is a, is a Chinese needle. That that's that's a purple. Well, it's uh, purple. Yeah, I got it for for the back mainly. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. and they have a thing that you have to pull out. Yeah, they have a little Ugh. little thing that you have to you have to twist first, and then you have to get rid of this little piece of plastic. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. No, yeah. So I my I haven't seen those, but my recommendation to you is write write to whoever the supplier is. That they will tell Saren to get rid of that shit because that's that's really not that's one of the huge advantages of Saren is that you you don't have that. Um, I would say that for the back for what you're trying to do, for the back where you want a thicker needle, I wouldn't spend the money on a Saren. 
I, I think for that, a dung bang, same size dung bang or, you know, a decent company would work fine. Honestly, I get the serings primarily for the 12 by 15s. Um, that I use lots for all the, the, for the scalp and for the feet. Um, for the, for the body, I use one by three or 0.16 by 30 by dung bangs and I get them 10. I, I oh, and I, I, with dung bangs, there is a difference to, between the Koreans. The, um, they have two styles of needle. I get the spring handle. For some reason, the spring handle is a better needle. I'm sure they will claim that it's exactly the same needle, but somehow it's different. I don't know why. Um, and I just get them 10, 10, 10 per pack with one guide tube. Um, that, and it's about, I would say it's a third of the price of serine, if mm. not less. Yeah. Might, be, might be even quite a bit less. Um, but it's just not, you know, so once you're getting, you know, with a thicker needle, it's not, yeah, serine will be nicer but it's, it's kind of almost not worth the effort. Yeah. So. Anything else? You mentioned, you mentioned that um, blood pressure treatment was one of your bread and butter treatments. Is mm -hmm. that because there are many alternate applications of it or just because there are so many people with blood pressure issues? Um, and, and if so, what are those alternate applications? It's a good question. Um, it's a mix. Um, it's, it's a combination that does lots of things, uh, primarily for people with digestive issues and um, the, um, the emotional, the, you know, the depression, anxiety, insomnia, that, that, that would be like the first go, you know, the, the first two um, subjects where this combination will tend to be good at. Um, now, you have to remember that many people will not know that they have low blood pressure. Right. They'll have no right. clue. They'll just yeah, say, yeah. well, the doctor tells me it's great. And, you know, so I'm kind of like wondering, gee, I wonder. It's a combination. So, all I can say is that this is a combination that works really well. Yes, if I know that there's low blood pressure, high blood pressure, weird blood pressure, but it's also a combination that works well on people where I've tried other things and they, this combination just tends to quote unquote come to the rescue. So I don't use it quite as often as say I use Sanjiao 8. Okay, but it's oh well, and sometimes I'll use it in conjunction. But it's one of the basic things that I will try, and so the the two places where it's likely to um, produce good results are uh, any kind of digestive issue and any kind of um, so-called psycho-emotional issue. You know, it's not a, really a great or oh, maybe in cardiac issues, but then if clearly related to blood pressure. Yeah. Um, but it's it's not like a great combination for say asthma. You know, it's it's it you know it could work decently well for uh, structural problems, for pain issues. Um but it's the yeah the, the two main places that I see it working, you know, the, the big categories are the the anxiety, depression, etc. and the any kind of digestion. So it's like a guay pitong. Yeah, that's very cute. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have one more question. When you were talking about the foot, you mentioned a point I'd never heard of before. Heart of soul. What is that point and what does it do? Okay. So heart of soul is uh, take kidney one and go slightly more um, distal. Okay, and many people will claim that that is kidney one, but if you take kidney one as, as the definition of the one third, you know, there's a definition of uh -huh. that, then, then heart of soul is a different point. So um, it comes from the fact that the, the, in the description of the channel says that um, the point goes from the little toe through the heart of the soul to kidney two, then circles around the, um, the ankle blah, 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 blah. So the heart of, you know, so this point that you can claim is kidney one, 
is called is called heart of soul it's used for uh, a number of things uh number one uh spinal pain oh number two um for heel pain okay those are the two big ones um, okay that heart of soul tends to be good for okay like low, low uh, when you say spine heavy um like yeah. lower back or or the whole spine uh, oh no uh, specifically spine not no, not not back spine yeah fabulous yeah. well for someone who didn't have many questions i certainly <laughs> got a lot of answers well <laughs> 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 it's it's what happens when we when we don't realize what's going you know things don't happen the way we think they should or would just had one more quick thing Evie. Yes. if you're finished camille yes i am thank um, you mary Jo. i just had one quick thing before you go maybe uh you know with the uh fire fire points yes um if um like if, if some say like liver two um somebody has liver too and you do liver four and eight, four and eight but it doesn't uh doesn't improve the tenderness of liver two is okay. there anything else that you what else is going on? okay so at that point yeah so that's um two things about that uh metal water does not always diminish the fire point immediately sometimes you have to come back five or ten minutes later and recheck it should at least um to my comfort level it should um um diminish some of the fire point pressure pain ideally so you have a number of things that happen first of all so okay two things specifically with liver two when you press liver two as a fire point, you, you should be pressing it towards the big toe. So if you're pressing it towards liver three, that may not signify a fire point in the same manner. So that might be why um, uh, liver four, uh, liver eight may not be working so well. Okay, so that's one. Another thing is the fire point concept and using metal water is one concept in a body that's having many issues going on so it might be that the reason why the metal water point just like anything else this protocol didn't work because some other protocol is needed first to address something more primary okay so for example let's say they have a blood pressure issue okay and you can do all the metal water that you want and nothing's going to move until you stick in under the third toe and then suddenly everything is going to start moving. Everything that didn't seem like it was useful before suddenly is extremely useful. So sometimes you just have to figure out what piece of the puzzle am I missing? And then the protocol that you thought should work will start working. No, sometimes it won't, but there's a chance. So that's something that, to consider. The other thing is, look at it in uh, and you on, only said liver too but you know if there's a context where there's a, a fair amount of fire points going on then this may you know the individual meridians may be a little too much to chase you may need to jump start it with something else so usually on the legs that's going to be kidney seven so start with kidney seven then keep checking the metal water of the particular meridians of hopefully there's less of them involved at this point that's not necessarily but you know so you just sometimes need to find something else that's more primary before the metal and water points will work so, so you're, you're pressing liver two then towards the big toe I, i'm I, pressing yeah. liver two towards the big toe uh as opposed to straight in or upwards towards liver three i'm actually pushing it against the bone of the big toe so i'm pressing it immediately as opposed to quote, quote, proximally or whatever or, or or just straight down you know like you know so if it was large just well 
I guess if I'm saying it's not just in four, then, then it makes it sound like it. But let's say if it's here, I'm pressing it down towards the thumb as opposed to up towards large intestine four or straight down towards the yin side. Um, I'm actually, I'm touching the bone. I'm, I'm pressing it against the bone with liver two. So it might be, because my impression is that when you're pressing it in, in, in this other direction, it will be involved with liver two as a fire point to some extent because of the location, but it won't be as involving it because of the direction, the vector of the pressure is different. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is because both liver four and liver eight are difficult to find. They're not the easiest points. They're not so clear. So with liver four, you really do want to go a thumb below the ankle bone. And you want to look for a, a tissue that feels a little puffy. And with liver eight, you want the knee slightly bent. And you want at the edge of the crease, you want to find like there's a, feel, there's a nodule feeling there. And that's what you want. So, and I think liver eight, especially, well, liver four people take wrong because they, they were taught to take it at the ankle, you know. But with liver eight, the problem is many people take it below the knee, a little above the knee. They, they do a lot of weird stuff with liver eight. And I think that, you know, stay at the, stay with the crease, go to the edge of the crease, you know, from bladder 40, move inwards. And, and definitely look for that nodule. Um, you know, and that's, you know, so, and I needle it slight, slightly upwards towards say liver nine, slightly. Okay. Um, so that might be, it might be a location problem because both these are two points that have unique, uh, location issues, um, that, that, you know, that they just don't, you know, like it's too easy to go somewhere in the vicinity and think you got that point. And in both cases, that's not the case. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? No. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, week. Avi. Thank you. We'll see each other next week, hopefully. And uh, Mary Jo, you'll be you'll be in full swing of op op post opening. <laughs> you'll you'll be sterilizing the computer like hell. <laughs> Great, you'll have lots of questions. <laughs> yeah. um, All right. Well, enjoy the week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.